time. Thank you so much for joining me today for some Sunday yoga. It is lovely to see all of you out there. Uh, we're going to be doing a primarily kind of stretchy, luxurious class this morning. Any props that make you feel really comfortable work on getting tension out of our hips, out of our shoulders, out of our spines, out of our jaws. And we'll have a couple of opportunities if you're feeling a little energetic this morning to bump it up. But you can also keep this just like a really nice, lazy class if you would like to. We're going to begin lying on our backs with our knees drawn into our chest. So when you're ready, go ahead and set yourself up lying in the center of your mat. The first thing, of course, that's important is just to get your low back comfortable. And from there, you'll draw your knees in towards your chest. I like to go one at a time and quite slowly here in the morning. And as you hug those knees in, you just want to feel a little bit of gentle compression against your belly. You are more than welcome, instead of using your hands on your shins or on your thighs, to draw your legs in to put a strap over the balls of your feet, over your thighs, or over your shins, especially if your legs resist coming really close towards you. Just bring them as close in as you can. Feel your low back lengthening against the mat here for a couple of breaths. From here, you might like to begin to rock a little bit from right to left. Just gently massaging your tailbone, your lower back. Feel free to take your knees at this point wider if you like, or even to come towards happy baby soles of the feet up towards the ceiling. that your low back hopefully feels at a little bit more ease. You're going to draw your knees back to your chest. Bring your right foot to the floor. We're going to start on the left side this morning just to be a little bit different. And you're going to draw your left knee out towards your left armpit and lightly down. You can just stay here kind of resting in this variation on Apanasana. Or you could go back to that half happy baby flipping the sole of your left foot up as you draw your knee down towards the armpit region. And it really depends what feels good to you. Holding the foot, holding the shin, holding the calf. You just want the knee to be a little bit wider and out towards the edge of your torso here. So you're getting into the inner aspect of your hip. And feel free to move. Feel free to extend your right leg long to the bottom of the mat. Experiment and see what feels nice here. It 
isn't meant to be terrifically intense. This is meant to just be a nice getting into the hips stretchy bit. From here, you're gonna draw that right, excuse me, left knee back in, and you're gonna take the left knee to the right, so across the body into a twist. As you do this, it's totally fine if your left shoulder lifts up. You can just lower it back towards the floor to get a little more of a stretch in the chest or even look out towards your left fingertips over here if you want. As you inhale, come back to the center line. Keep hugging that left knee in towards the chest. And now you want it to be resting, if possible, against your belly. And you just find a little bit of gentle compression there for a deep breath. And then you'll switch the left foot. will come down and the right knee will come in. And you can start by just guiding that right knee a little bit towards the right armpit here. That might feel just right. You can hold the thigh or the shin. If you want, you can go back towards that half happy baby holding the foot. Welcome to extend that left leg long if you want to. Bring that leg back in. You're going to cross the right leg over to the left, creating a little bit of twist. It doesn't matter how far it goes. You just want to feel a pleasant sensation in your spine. Feel free to soften the right shoulder back towards the mat, looking to the right for a deeper stretch in the upper body. You inhale, come back to the center line. And again, just for a few moments, you're going to really hug that right knee in towards you, maybe getting some gentle compression against your abdominal organs. Again, this is a great place where you could use, if your leg doesn't like to come in or your hands don't like to catch your leg, a strap on your thigh, on your shin, or on the sole of your foot to assist you. You're going to release that right foot down to the mat. Slide it all the way out long. Slide the left leg all the way out long. Reach your arms up over your head as you breathe in. As you breathe out, relax your shoulders a little bit. As you breathe in, you're going to reach long through your right fingertips, through your right toes, and totally relax your left side. So your right side starts to elongate. You can even reach your right fingertips a little over to the left. Enjoy that stretch. And then go over to the other side, totally relax the right side, extend and reach through the left fingertips, through the left toes, lengthening the left side. Release, let's go one more time to each side, inhaling, right lengthens, exhaling, right softens. Inhaling, left side lengthens, reach, 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 exhaling to soften. Bring your arms down. Draw the soles of your feet in, so your knees are pointing up towards the ceiling. Adjust your pelvis as needed. Press the palms of your hands into the floor. As you inhale, relax your shoulders. As you exhale, firm up your abdominal organs, like you're drawing all of your organs down towards the floor. You're firming up this wall of muscle here, and you're kind of just gently pressing it downward. It's almost like a little massage for your stomach. And when you feel like there is a bit of firmness there, a bit of hold, press into your heels and lift your hips up. And you don't have to lift very far. We're just gonna stay for the inhale and then release with the next exhale. Totally relax again, inhale. Exhale, firm everything up. Inhale to lift. 
exhale to lower. We're going to lift right back up on the inhale this time, so firming everything up, lifting. Exhaling to release. We're just going to do this a few times. If lifting and lowering doesn't work for you, feel free to hold your bridge as long as possible and then lower down. If you want a little bit more, you can extend your arms up over your head as you lift your hips. And then lower the arms down by the sides as you relax the hips to the floor. We'll do about three or four more of these. And go at your own pace. And it's really just about feeling a gentle activation of your abdominal organs, starting to get a little bit of length in your spine. Maybe a gentle wake up for the glutes and the quads, the leg muscles. This next one, lower all the way back down. Again, hug your knees towards your chest. And rock a little bit from right to left. You could continue rocking from right to left, eventually rolling yourself over to one side using your hands to press yourself up. Or you could bring your hands behind your thighs and rock a little forward and back if you feel more frisky. If you choose that rocking forward and back option, just make sure it feels comfortable to your low back. We are all going to come eventually to a seated position. Crossing the legs. See if you can cross the left foot in front of the right foot here. We'll switch sides in a few moments. Reach your arms up as you breathe in. And as you breathe out, reach forward, come into a forward fold. And it doesn't matter how far forward you go, it might just be a few inches. You might even find that you're quite tight early in the morning and you place a block or a prop underneath your hands. You may find that you have a lot of space and you can keep crawling your hands or your forearms forward, lowering your forehead towards the floor. Take a few breaths here. Again, feel free to move a little bit, just feeling what feels kind of pleasantly stretchy for your hips in your lower back. And you're going to gently walk yourself back in as you inhale. Roll your shoulders away from your ears. Lift your arms up over your head. And then twist to your left, bringing your right hand down, maybe onto your left leg, your left hand behind you. Relax your shoulders and your sits bones against the mat. right hand on your left leg, you're going to come back to the center line, lifting your left arm up, and then you're going to lean to the right, finding a little side bend on the left. Feel free to turn your gaze up towards your left fingertips. Press your left hip into the mat. Inhale back to the center line. Unwind your arms. You're going to switch the crossing of your legs, so now your right foot is in front. Inhale here. And as you exhale, fold forward. And again, you just find that spot that feels really good for your body. You may notice, of course, that one hip is quite a lot more resistant to this action than the other hip. Another deep breath. And then gently walk your fingertips back in. Roll your shoulders down away from your ears. Lift your arms up. This is your inhale. As you exhale, you're going to twist over towards your right. Dropping your right hand down, left hand to the leg. And again, Really relax both of your sits bones. So both of your butt cheeks are firmly against the mat. You're not lifting up in an effort to twist further. You're grounded down and the twist is just gently to the side. It's again, not super intense yet. We'll get into a couple more intense stretches a little bit later. 
for now we're just kind of doing the big the big yawn stretch as we get out of bed in the morning when you're ready you come back to the center line you leave your left hand where it is you bring your right arm straight up and then you lean a little bit over to the left stretching the right side here you can actively glue your right hip down maybe look up underneath your right arm and really feel that side stretch a little bit deeper than when we were lying down as you inhale come back to the center line and reach both of your arms up interlace your fingers turn your palms up to the ceiling inhale again here just reach your palms as far up as you can as you exhale you're gonna bring your palms forward in front of your chest they're still facing outward as you round your spine back into a bit of a cat shape belly button towards the back inhale lift everything up you're gonna pull your arms a little back opening the center of your chest if that feels possible and then exhale round forward into this little bit of a cat shape do two more like that your arms up overhead as you exhale simply float your fingertips down by your sides take a few moments to roll your shoulders to move your neck in any way that feels good move away from anything that feels painful and just focus on what feels really nice when you're ready from there you're gonna make your way towards standing at the very front of your mat. As you come into that standing position, take a moment, maybe roll out your ankles a little bit. Wiggle your toes and set your feet a comfortable distance apart for your body. Relax your shoulders. Let your hands be a little bit heavy. Take a deep breath here. As you inhale, you're gonna draw your arms up over your head. You can touch your palms together if you want or leave them a little bit wide. As you exhale, you're going to fold. You can draw your hands through the center or out to the side. Stick your buns out behind you. Forearms to thighs, hands to shins, fingertips to some props or all the way to the floor as you come to this forward fall. Just dangle here for a few breaths, feeling free to move. I'm rocking forward and back today because that just feels really nice to my feet. But you could equally well be going side to side. I'm just maybe moving your head around again. It might feel nice. Take the little movements that feel again pleasantly stretchy. your knees nice and soft. You're going to ride tall to the sky. One vertebrae at a time starting on an inhale. Start to come all the way up. Feel free to walk your hands on your legs for a little more support. Just rolling slowly up to standing. When you reach that point, you'll roll your shoulders back. Again, let your arms grow a little bit heavy. Move if you need to to get, again, stable in this position. And then inhale, draw your arms up. Exhale, fold forward. This time we'll inhale into halfway lift, hands onto the shins or the thighs, reach the crown of the head forward, shrug the shoulders back. Exhale to fold, plant the fingertips down, step the right foot to the back of the mat, bring the right knee to the floor. Toes on that back foot could be tucked or untucked, see what feels comfortable to your body. Draw your inner thighs together. So your hips are probably going to come a little bit back as you press down firmly into your left heel. You're going to see if you can lift yourself up, hands onto the thigh. Press your left palm onto your leg. Press your right palm on top of your left palm. Roll your shoulders back a little bit here. If you feel like there's no stretch here on the right front side of your body, you might lean a little further forward. That might feel nice. Roll your shoulders back wherever you are and maybe gaze lightly up. This is your inhale. Your exhale is folding you forward, planting your fingertips to the floor or to a set of props on either side of your front foot. 
take your hips back, we're going to a little half splits action. And this left leg just comes as straight as feels possible at this point in the morning. You can go all the way straight if you're ready to go there, even flipping your toes up, but you certainly don't need to. Come forward over that front leg until you feel a stretch back of that left thigh. As you inhale, you're going to come forward again, planting your left foot to the floor. If you took your left foot and kind of wiggle it forward or flip your toes up, you might have to wiggle it back in because you'll feel like it's a little bit far away from you. That's fine. Bring your left knee over your left ankle, plant your right hand to the floor or to a prop, and you're going to twist over towards your left, bringing your left hand onto your left thigh. I'm going to kind of lean back weirdly here so maybe you can see that just like the lunge, I'm pressing my hand into my thigh here, and then I'm twisting over to the left. As you do that, feel more than free to take your left foot and widen it out to the left if that feels better. I even like to angle my toes towards the left front corner of my mat because that feels nice to my hips. If this variation feels like too much for your hips, feel free to take the twist quite high, even putting a block underneath your right hand, keeping your right hip more stacked on top of your left hip as you take your left arm maybe up to the sky. See what feels good. If you want to take it a step further, and you're feeling quite comfortable down here, low to the floor, shoulders rolling back, you could open your left arm, attempting to stack it in a parallel line on top of your right leg. Again, shrug your shoulders away from your ears. Your left shoulder is moving onto your back in this scenario. Take a few deep breaths. When you're ready, come back to the center line. Bring your hands to the inside of your left foot. Tuck your left set of toes under. Reach your left foot up, or excuse me, reach your right knee up is what I'm trying to say. So that both of your knees are lifted away from the floor. Turn your right foot to face the long edge of the mat as you walk your fingertips underneath your nose. Turn your left foot to face the long edge of the mat. Angle your feet in a way that feels comfortable to your body as you find a forward fold. Feel free to use a prop here underneath your hands. My toes like to angle slightly in, my heels slightly out as I fold. You might be the same, you might be the opposite. You might like to go toes out, heels in, or feet totally parallel. Let your body tell you what is best here this morning. And you fold again forward as far as you need to to feel some stretchy action. Back of the thighs, inner thighs. Let your head be nice and heavy here. Just kind of melt into this stretch a little bit. Let go of the effort of trying to find some kind of arbitrary perfect place and just enjoy what it is happening. When you're ready, Press your fingertips down and lift yourself up about halfway. Feel free again to place a prop underneath your fingertips. And we're going to go towards the back of the mat. Turn your right toes and just angle them a little more out towards the right back corner of your mat over here. And then you're going to bend into your right knee as you walk your fingertips in that direction. Feel free to re-angle your foot as you go over here so that your knee feels comfortable. Feel free to angle your other foot here as well. And you just kind of hang out here in this skandhasana variation. You can feel free to go lower, kind of coming into a humble warrior variation. Feel free to come higher, working a little more strength maybe, squeezing the heels of your feet towards one another to get some inner thigh action. Or you can try for a little bit of flexibility on the left side, dropping your right hip down, turning your left toes up. Your, your choice, what feels nice this morning? And in any of these positions, attempt to bring your hands in front of your heart and work a little bit of balance for a few breaths. And just, again, enjoy what is actually happening. There's no place that you need to be here. This is the journey, not the destination class. We're not moving towards anything particular. We're just enjoying what's happening in our body and hopefully enjoying some release in our muscles today.
when you're ready, you're gonna move all the way to the back of the mat. So you wanna bring your fingertips down and either lift up a little bit or lower down a little bit as you turn your right foot to face the back of the mat. Drop your left knee to the floor. Again, you can tuck toes or untuck toes, see what feels comfortable. It's not important that it be the same as the other side unless that type of symmetry is, you know, something of a mental health for you. Sometimes it's, you know, you just have to do it right on each side exactly the same. Press down into your right heel, draw your inner thighs together and use that strength to lift yourself up, hands onto the thigh. Press the right hand down to the leg, press the left hand on top of the right hand, roll the shoulders back, lift the center of the chest. If you don't feel any action on the left front side of your body, feel free to lean into that front knee a little bit. Continue taking your shoulders back. Enjoy for a few breaths. Maybe even looking up to the place where the wall meets the ceiling in front of you. Inhale here. And then as you exhale, you take your hips back. We're going to that little hamstring stretch to the fingertips to the floor or to props, framing your front foot. Take your hips a little back, straightening to the extent necessary to feel the stretch, your right leg. If you need a little more straightness, you can always wiggle the foot forward and flip the toes up to get into the stretch. You can lower as far over that front leg as you need to feel action at the back of the body. Again, hug your inner thighs together here. Hug your left hip, your back hip, in towards the center line. As you inhale, you come forward, releasing the hamstring stretch. Again, if you wiggle that right foot forward, you might want to take it a little bit back to get a little bit more stability. The left hand plants down, floor block. The right hand comes onto the right thigh. And you use that to help push the hand into the thigh so you can twist over to the right. And again, you can be coming a little bit forward with the left hip as you twist. Again, you're rolling your right shoulder onto your back. If you want to go into that deeper variation, you can open your right arm up parallel line over your left leg. If that feels like too much at the front of your body, too much in your hips, stay a little bit higher. Grab a prop and put it underneath your hand. Keep the hips more stacked, left hip on top of right hip. I like quite a high block here. If I go for this variation, keep the hand on the thigh, or in this one, you can take the arm to the sky to get a little more work in the shoulder. Find the variation that works for your body this morning. Again, I forgot to mention this, but you can take your right foot further out to the right to create more inner hip stretch here. As you're ready, you're going to come back down, bringing the hands to the inside of the right foot. You're going to take your hips back, tuck your left toes, lift your left knee, and move to the long edge of the mat. Left foot turns to face it, right foot turns to face it. Take a moment to line your heels up in a parallel line with one another. Adjust the angle of your feet and find your forward fold. Potentially, this time you add an arm variation, maybe taking your hands to your ankles or around behind your back lifting your arms up to the sky as you interlace the fingers, hold the wrists or the elbows. As you're ready, releasing your fingertips to the floor, press them down, lift yourself up. Now maybe turning your left toes out a little bit as you bend your left knee, feel free to turn your right toes out as well or angle them in any way that feels good for a little skandasana. You can stay kind of in the middle, fingertips on the floor, hands on a block. You can go really low, bowing forward. Really nice stretch for the inner legs. You can lift up and go for a little bit of strength. You can do a little bit of a pulse here if you want to. Or you can drop the hips down and go for that really deep 
inner thigh work here on the right side. And if you were really paying attention, you might have noticed that on the side where I had my righty bent, I couldn't get my right heel to the floor. But here on this left side, my heel touches the floor. It doesn't matter as long as it feels good to you. And it doesn't have to be the same on both sides. Maybe you bring your hands to your heart in any of these positions. When you're ready, you release your fingertips. You're coming all the way back to the original front of your mat. Your left foot turns to face it. Your right foot turns to face it. You plant your hands down. And now you're going to step your left foot back to downward facing dog. And just move a little bit. Anything that feels good, pedaling the feet, swaying the hips. Of course, if that feels like a little too much for the wrists, or the back, you can always come and move and wiggle your spine in your table pose. Either way works. You just want to start to feel a little more stretchy. From here, lower your knees to the floor if they're not already there. You're going to slide your hands a little bit out in front of your shoulders. And then slide your shoulders over your wrists. We're going for three slow push-ups. Shrug your shoulders back. You might like to cross your ankles. You might not. See what feels good to you. As you lower towards the floor, go just as far as you know that you can get back up from. So on your exhale, you lower as close to the floor as you feel like you might be able to lift up. Maybe you even go and you kiss your nose down and then you lift up on your inhale. And you just do two more. They're not fast, they're slow and deliberate. And after you've done three full downs and ups, you lower yourself all the way down. You bring the tops of your feet to the mat, you press them into the floor, you press the fingertips down and you lift to a cobra pose. Maybe you roll your shoulders further back, feel free to press into your hands and come up a little higher if that feels pleasant to your body. Exhale to release, tuck your toes under, and you're going to go back to a table pose or a downward facing dog pose. You can take a few minutes just to move around again. If you're feeling like you need to burn a little more energy, you can always repeat that cycle, either dropping the knees to the floor and sliding forward to a low plank, or sliding forward to a high plank, shoulders over the wrists. Feel free to do three more push-ups, or simply to lower through one push-up before coming to your cobra. And the next breath or two, we'll all be in table, or downward facing dog. Now you're going to float your left foot to the sky as you inhale and step your left foot to the front of the mat as you exhale. Walk your fingertips back to frame your right foot. Lift the center of your chest a little bit as you inhale. Feel free to be using blocks on either side of this front foot here. This is your inhale. Maybe looking a little forward, maybe relaxing the right hip a little bit towards the floor. Exhale, pull your left leg back, straightening it a little bit. A little bit of a pyramid pose. Inhale forward. And exhale back. Maybe even flipping the toes up like in the half splits. We'll do that just three more times. We're going to meet back in our lunge position, front knee over front ankle. You could go for the same variation that we did in the first set, dropping the right knee down, pressing the left heel to the floor, lifting up into a lunge. If you wanted to take that a little bit further, you might lift your arms to the sky. If you feel like you want something a little more vigorous, you might leave your back knee lifted, peel yourself up, you could press your hands onto your thigh here, or lift your arms to the sky in crescent lunge. Totally your choice of where to go. 
regardless of your positioning, leg, uh, back knee down, excuse me, or up, not back, leg up or down, or hands on the thigh, arms to the sky, shoulders roll back, heart or the center of your chest comes forward. We'll take a few breaths here. Inhale deeply. As you exhale, fold again forward, fingertips to the floor. This works with your back knee up or your back knee down. We're going to go back to our twist. Right hand to the floor, left hand to the left thigh, twist over to the left. And the same thing applies here as the first side. Even if you have your back knee lifted, you can take your left foot out further to the left as you open things up. If you have your back knee lifted, focus on lifting your hips up as you find your twist. Feel free to take your arm to the sky or again behind you over that opposite leg. Back knee up or down. Feel free to come back to that variation that's a little more gentle. Lost my block here to the hip flexors with a stacked block and more stacked hips. So you're creating more of a 90 degree angle with the knees and the thighs. We'll take a couple more breaths here. You're going to unwind yourself coming back to the inside of your left foot. Tuck your right toes, lift your right knee up, and walk to the long edge of the mat. A couple of different options here depending how you feel. You could hang out again in your forward fold. It might just feel so nice, so relaxing. If you feel like you want to work a little bit harder today, you might walk your fingertips up, turn your toes out and your heels in, and come and hold a squat for a little while. You want your knees to be tracking in the same direction as your toes, so angle your feet in the way that feels comfortable. Feel free to press your hands down into your thighs. Again, roll your shoulders back. We're gonna stay here for five or six breaths. You're welcome to pulse if you want to. Or you can simply hold the squat and just feel a little bit of heat. And of course, Feel free to mix it up and spend part of your time in the squat, part of your time in the forward fold. All right. If you've been in that squat, you can straighten your legs. If you're in a forward fold, you'll press your fingertips down, you'll come into that halfway lift. Again, we're going to the back of the mat. You can angle your right toes for comfort. Bend your right knee. You can stay in the middle. You can be high up. I said that backwards. You can be in the middle. You can be high up. You can be folding really low. Or you can come back down, flipping your left toes up towards the ceiling as you drop your hips towards the right heel. Find the variation that works for you. I'm going to be totally honest. I'm just too lazy to come out of this last variation, so I'm going to stay here. Feels pretty decent. Take a couple breaths, maybe attempting to bring your hands in front of your heart. And then you're going to go all the way to the back of the mat again. Right foot turns to face it, left foot turns to face it a little bit differently on this side. You're going to plant your hands down and now you're going to step your right foot back to downward facing dog or if you prefer drop your knees to table. You could hang out, just stay in down dog and table. Feel free to drop down and just take a nice luxurious child pose as well. Or you can take another half vinyasa inhaling forward to plank. Knees up or knees down, you might exhale to the floor. Inhale, you can take cobra. Upward dog or elbows to the floor, sphinx. And then exhale back. We'll all meet in the next breath or two in our table or our downward facing dog. When you're ready, float your right foot to the sky. Step your right foot between your hands. And again, you could go a little bit more vigorous and keep your back knee lifted and lift up, hands onto the right thigh or even arms to the sky for a crescent lunge here. 
or you could go back to the stretchy, luxurious morning variation. Back knee on the floor, hands to the thigh, or arms to the sky for a little bit more stretch. Again, you can take the hips forward if the knee is down and you want that deeper stretch. Pick the variation that just feels really good to you. Whether you want a little bit of heat or you want to keep going with that stretch. Either way, you're pressing down into your right heel. You're drawing your inner thighs a little bit together. Inhale here. As you exhale, folding forward, planting your fingertips. Your back toe tucks and your back knee lifts if you dropped it down. This is your inhale. Looking forward, rolling your shoulders back. Your exhale is straightening your front leg, maybe flipping your toes up, pyramid pose. Inhale, forward lunge. Exhale, back pyramid. Three more like that at your own pace. Coming back to your lunge, front knee over the front ankle. The left hand plants down. Again, the back knee can stay lifted, a little more vigorous, or the back knee can drop down. Right hand onto the thigh, twisting over to the right. Potential to take the arm to the sky, to take the right foot wide, either the knee up or the knee down variation, or of course to come to that kind of gentle hip flexor variation, maybe a hand to a block as you keep the more 90 degree angle with the legs as you twist. Find the best stretch for your body and enjoy for a few breaths. Inhale here. As you exhale, fold back to the inside of your right foot Tuck your left toes under, lift your left knee, and walk to the long edge of the mat. Again, you could go really nice and gentle with a forward fold. Maybe this time you'd like to turn your hands around and walk them behind you through your legs, looking back. If you want that more vigorous option, again, you could come into a squat, toes out, heels in. Maybe this time you take your squat a little more dynamic. Inhaling, you could reach your arms out to the side. Exhaling, you could lean over to your right. Inhaling, you could come to the center. Exhaling, you could lean to the left. You could equally well just hold the squat, or you can keep flowing a little bit from side to side. You're also welcome to pulse up and down again here, giving yourself a little bit more oxygenation, a little bit faster movement. See what feels good. And take another three or four breaths here. Your choice of where to be. Squat, dynamic squat, forward fold. When you're ready, you're going to press your fingertips down, lift up halfway. And then we're going to go back into our skangasana. So we'll turn the left toes out a little bit, coming back to the front of the mat, leaning over to the left. You can keep your fingertips to the floor, your hands to the leg. You can go a little down for that bow and humble warrior. Or you can turn the right toes up as you drop the hips to the left heel. Totally your choice. See what feels really nice to you. And again, we spend a bit of time here, kind of luxuriate in each of these poses this morning. And when you're ready, you can press your fingertips down, you lift up. You're gonna go all the way back to the front of the back, planting your hands down. Set yourself up strong so you can step back to downward dog. 
or to table pose, your choice. Take a couple breaths, get comfortable. And we're gonna do three more push-ups on your toes, pulling forward. We're dropping your knees down. Feel free to cross your ankles again if that feels good. And again, it's not about how fast, it's not about doing 10 instead of three, it's about slow and deliberate motion. So shoulders back, belly button lifting. Again, you're lifting your abdominal muscles towards your organs so they feel held and kind of like a big hug for your waistline. As you exhale, you go down just as low as you know you can get back up from, and then you inhale up. You do three total. Of course, if you can maintain that strength and integrity and still go slow and do more, you're more than welcome to. And then after the third one, you lower all the way down. You untuck your toes, you press your feet down, you lift up, you find your cobra, maybe your sphinx or your upward dog, and then you release and you just lie on the floor. Stretch your arms out in front of you, maybe rest your head to one side, and take a few deep breaths. Here you're going to stretch your right arm out to the side, palm of the hand to the floor, out from your shoulder. Tuck your left set of toes under. Press your left fingertips to the floor underneath your left elbow. So you have this like big chicken wing over on your left side. You can turn and look towards those left fingertips. The head can be on the floor. And then you roll yourself by pressing into your left foot over onto your outer right hip. And you go just as far as you need to go to feel a stretch at the front of your right shoulder. Maybe you even like to step your left foot behind your right leg. Maybe you like to take your left hand behind your back. Spend a few breaths here. Enjoy this deep shoulder opener, this broken wing position. Come back onto your belly. I'm going to move your hands in a little bit. You are going to take your left leg up and out to the side so that your left knee is at either the height of your left hip or somewhere a little bit below it. Your left foot can be open like a little frog, or you can take the sole of your left foot to your right thigh, more like an upside down tree pose. And then I prop myself up here on my elbows. If that feels good, you're welcome to stay there. But what I recommend doing is lying yourself down, either straight down, resting your head on your hand, that might feel quite nice, or taking your torso a little bit further towards your left, so you're creating kind of a banana or a crescent shape with your upper body over towards the left side, and then lying yourself down there. And enjoy this tree frog pose for a few breaths. Feeling free to add props underneath your head, a blanket underneath your knee if that feels more comfortable. you're ready you're going to come back towards the center slide your left leg long and take a moment to just wiggle your hips from side to side and then we'll take that shoulder stretch broken wing over to the other side so you'll want to extend your left arm out palm on the floor right fingertips go underneath the right elbow you're looking over to the right you can always put your head on a block here tuck your right toes under and you're going to roll yourself over onto now your left outer hip and just a little bit might be fine you might be able to step back behind you you might be able to take your arm behind you 
See how it goes from your body. And just enjoy this stretch. You can have the palm of your hand on that left side all the way against the floor. I'm just running into my wall so I have a little bit of lift in my hand. That is not necessary. to your belly, slide your left arm in, feel free to prop yourself up onto your torso, onto your torso, prop yourself up onto your arms to lift your torso is what I'm trying to say there, sliding your right knee out to the side, either that kind of frog shape or drawing the sole of the foot in for the tree shape. From there, if you like, you can stay propped up kind of in a back bend, some people really enjoy this, a little bit more active, or you can lie yourself all the way down let go or you can go for a little bit of an extra side stretch by inchworming your torso over towards the right so right elbow towards right knee before you lie yourself down enjoy the stretch think about relaxing the inside of your right hip towards the mat the center slide your right leg down press your hands under your shoulders press yourself back towards child's pose taking the knees wider if you prefer take a deep full breath here really relax your elbows and gently crawl yourself to seated Taking your legs out in front of you. You're going to extend your left leg long and go back into that kind of tree shape by bringing the sole of the right foot to the left leg. Feel free as you come here to add props. You can prop underneath your right knee, your bent knee, or you can always sit up onto a blanket or both. You want to feel like as you start this forward fold that it is relatively pain free actually totally pain-free and mostly relatively discomfort-free in your lower back. Lift up and as you do that lift your heart, reach your arms up, inhale and then as you exhale fold forward and you just go to the spot where you can maintain a little bit of hold for a breath and then you relax. Hands onto the thigh, you can use the floor, you can hold on to anywhere on your leg or your foot if you like. Draw your left hip a little back as you move forward. Take a few deep breaths here, bowing the chin towards the chest. This is Janus or Sasana or an English head to knee pose. Really nice asymmetric stretch for the hips, for the sacrum. You're ready, walk your fingertips all the way back in, roll your shoulders back, and now extend your right leg out, 
bring the sole of your left foot in. Same thing on this other side. Feel free to prop yourself up, even if it's not the same propping on the right as it is on the left. To begin, you lift your arms up. You move your chest a little bit forward. So you feel open at the center of your chest as you inhale. And then as you exhale, you fold. And it doesn't matter how far forward you go. You just want to find that spot where you're like, okay, I could actually hold myself here if I needed to. And then relax. Think about softening the left side of your chest towards the mat. Right hip goes gently back as your torso moves gently forward. You're ready, walk your fingertips back in towards you. Pull your shoulders away from your ears. Stretch both of your legs out. Maybe lean back onto your hands, give them a little wiggle, a little shake, rotate your ankles. And from here, we're going to lie ourselves all the way down for Shavasana. And Shavasana is any pose that feels relaxing to you. You can do that traditional Shavasana pose, just lying on your back with your arms out to the side and your feet nicely flopped open. But you could also add some props. You could put a little rolled blanket or bolster or pillow underneath your knees. You could put a blanket underneath your head. If you happen to be near a wall, you can always take your legs up the wall. Really nice option, especially after kind of a stretchy class to just really relish that relaxation and the space that's been created in your body. Really any position of the body that allows you to let go is appropriate here. Just find the place that feels the most comfortable to you. Once you get there, close your eyes, soften your jaw, your shoulders, and your belly.
please. If you have the time today, spend an extra few minutes and enjoy Shavasana for a little longer. When it's time to come back to your day, take a deep breath in. And an even deeper breath out. Wiggling your fingers and your toes. Perhaps moving your head from right to left. As you're ready, you can make your way over to one side to rest for a few breaths. Before making your way to your most comfortable seated position this morning. As you arrive there, let your hands come in front of your heart. Close with our deep breath together, in through the nose, out through the mouth, on three. One, two, three. <sighs> Namaste. Thank you for sharing your practice always your precious time with me. Have a wonderful